Mike from around the world is going to join us tonight, so it's going to be a very powerful broadcast, no question about it. We're looking forward to asking him some serious questions. Um, it's not going to get better, okay? There are certain things that, guys, we just – look, we can't stop it. There's something coming to this planet that we cannot stop. We can do all the technology. We can get all the AIs working on it. We can do whatever we want to do, but we can't stop it. And we're going to get Mike around the world to help us understand that. But we can't stop it. There's, uh, we just can't, and that's not the only thing we can't stop. Um, we're going to talk about something here that Mike from around the world is going to be on with us. We're going to talk to him about a lot of stuff tonight that is happening um, but I've been, I've been thinking, you know, okay, Mike said the sun is going to, okay, do this like implosion thing. And so I did some research and, um, here's what I found out. The existence of an elusive celestial body known as planet X has been a topic of debate and speculation within the scientific community and among enthusiasts. Now, some theories suggest that it, if such a planet were to exist and does exist and approach our solar system, it could potentially have significant effects on the sun. Now, this report explores two hypothetical scenarios, the possibility of planet X causing the sun to implode and the idea that it might draw hydrogen photons from the sun. The concept, though, of the ninth planet, often referred to as Planet X, gained attention as astronomers um, observed particular gravitational anomalies or orbital irregularities in the outer reaches of the solar system. And while the existence of such a planet remains unconfirmed by the scientific community, the potential consequences of its presence have sparked intriguing theories. Scenario number one, one speculative theory proposes that the gravitational influence of planet X could trigger a chain reaction leading to the implosion of the sun. The, fo the proponents of this ideal suggest that as planet X approaches, its gravitational force could disrupt the delicate balance between the sun's gravitational pull and the outward pressure from nuclear fusion reactions in its core. This question about we can't stop it is really was raised by Mike from around the world. And we're going to be finding out uh, more information tonight about this. God's in control of everything. And there is scripture on this. And so I thought I would pick up a Bible just for a moment before I get into Russia and and Saudi Arabia and the earthquakes and the catastrophic events going on all over the world right now. I mean, it's crazy. I wanted to read just a few verses from 2 Peter chapter 3. And the Bible says this in verse 8. This is 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord's not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he's long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. You, we can't stop it. It will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. We can't stop it. So if Apostle Peter, 2,000 years ago, writes this in the Scripture, who you say, well, where in the world did he get his scientific information to make such a proclamation? Well, he's the head of the church, the early church. He was the, the, the apostle that Christ certainly leaned on more than anyone else. He walked with the Lord. He talked with the Lord. 
Uh, he, he walked on the water with the Lord. Believe me, he had enough time to spend to, to have some conversations about how the end of time will come, what will happen to this planet, and Jesus explained it to him, so he writes it for us in his epistle letter in 2 Peter chapter 3. And he says, this earth is going to, it's going to become an inferno at some point. Now, there's a lot of prophecy. We're in the end times, but there's a lot of prophecy to be fulfilled, but it can be fulfilled quickly because he just told you one day with the Lord is the same as a thousand years and a thousand years a day. In other words, time doesn't really is irrelevant when it comes to prophetic events of God. Time is something we measure the rotations of our planet, the third rock from the sun around the, uh, the sun ball. But in God's mind, He's, he's from the beginning, and he has no end. And time means nothing. He's even going to stop all time at some point when he declares that time shall be no more. So I'm telling you that we can't stop it. The prophecy is in process. And the scientists and the, and the individuals that are studying these things, they are... They are looking at it, but let me, I'm not going to stop here about the earth going to burn up and just leave you on fire. Let me finish a couple more verses. It says, see in them that all these things shall be dissolved. 2 Peter 3, verse 11. See in them that all these things should be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. I'm here to tell you that Peter it wants us to know this thing is, you might as well understand it. Now, there's some prophecy that has to be fulfilled. We've got a war going on right now in the Middle East that's part of the prophetic uh, timeline of the return of Christ to Jerusalem. We still have a third temple has to be built. We still have to have an Antichrist rise up and a seven-year tribulation period where the Antichrist halfway through that walks into the temple of God before the worshipers of God and declares he's God. We're already seeing the anti-Semitism off the charts around the globe. Are you serious, folks? Is this Mike from around the world? Pastor Paul, how you doing this evening? <laughs> Feeling pretty good tonight. Um, wow, we've been talking about a lot of hard, heavy-hitting stuff tonight, Mike. How are you? Well, I'm doing pretty good. Busy as usual, but uh, pretty good. Okay, I was going to ask you, what you, what are you more busy with right now? Venezuela attacking Guyana? Uh, <laughs> Putin, Venezuela's a big deal. Yeah. That's uh, a big deal. Uh, Putin running around over in the Middle East all of a sudden? Who let him out? Um, you know, uh, so, I mean, look, there's some serious things happening with the heat factor that we have in the world right now. People are not ready for the fires. Um, they're not ready for the fires let's, let's, that are coming They're, amen. they're Let, just not. Let's go, let's go down that path a minute because, you know, you've talked to us before about the sun, uh, is, is going to implode or it's, or the, the photons are going to get sucked out with the hydro, the hydrogen and there's there's a yeah, we're going to have a photonic exchange exchange yeah. it's yeah. it's coming yeah. and we're already watching the sun now again today the sun is volatile and now there's this solar flare i guess headed toward mars that's outrageous it's going to hit it on uh, december the 11th and we don't know what it's going to do to mars uh, it's not the first time but i mean the sun is becoming unbelievable and and you've talked about it many times and that effect on our planet we can't stop it. Uh, you know, Peter told us it's going to eventually just completely consume it. But there's some prophecy yeah. before that happens. But still, certainly, we're moving quicker toward this. Can you help explain to people what it means by the sun imploding or or, or what's going to happen? A, pho a photonic exchange is yeah. when it's already been observed uh, multiple times that in a, in a system with more than one sun. When they're when they're close in proximity as far as celestial distance is concerned the 
whatever sun is that's brightest, right? It will often begin to redirect its photons. Um, the other stars will actually start to suck the energy out of the radiant star, right? And it will start to recharge. They recharge this way. In fact, there is a cycle that in a system, binary system, for example, uh, I believe we're in a binary system, that, you know, every few thousand years or, or tens of thousands of years, the second star will make its proximity approach where it can actually interact with the forces of the primary sun. And at that moment, as it gets closer, the, the, the color of the suns, the star will change because photons are going to be pulled into this very dense object that's swinging by very fast, which means in our case, we're going to see a change in the sunlight. We're going to see a change in the sun itself. We're going to see a change in the activity of the sun. As we discussed, we discussed this past ball. When was this? This was uh, the beginning of the year. Yeah. And now, now we're the sun is it. doing, because I said these exact words, that the sun, it, it's, its seasons would be untimely, meaning it would, it would wake up in times it should be dormant. It would, it would have, uh, you know, flares and CMEs would become a constant. They would become normal. And, then before you know it, we're going to see light redirected to the other star, right? They, this has already been observed. When you say the other, and, star, um, the other star, you're talking about the binary, the, the binary the one, one that's coming, coming in. By. That's okay, right. Okay. It will start to suck material off of our sun, wow. right? Right. And w when this takes place, um, when the photons are redirected in the beginning, we're going to have a lot of infrared heat, right? Infrared will still point at the earth. It's going to cook us. Believe it or not, the, right. the bright light that people see, that reaction uh, from from other types of photons is almost like a safety net to keep us from burning up. It diffuses infrared. But in the absence of certain wavelengths, you're going to have infrared cooking the Earth. So we're about to get very hot well, and very we, dry. We, we were right? told that in, I think, the 16th chapter of Revelation. We were told that men would be scorched. They'd be scorched. And they yeah. would gnaw their tongues for pain. So this is going to I'll happen you, while we still have people here. Right? I'll tell you what, Pastor. Yeah. yeah. Because it's all, the. I, here's my belief. Here's my belief. Okay. That process, right? We're going to see hints of that process beginning this year, right? This year. Right. In fact, wow. as soon as people can go outside again, they're going to see effects from this. They're going to see a change in the color of the sun yet again. They're also going to feel heat like they did not feel it before. In other words, it's going to be, um, it's going to be very invasive, right? Here's the scripture. Outside. Here's the scripture. You ahead. talk about it. It says that in this revelation, folks, 16 verse eight, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire and men were scorched with great heat and blaspheme the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. So. <laughs> and think of this. Yeah. Think of this, Pastor Paul. Before that happens, right? I believe before that happens, the sun has already. Because when you read about in, in the trumpets, right? Yeah. yeah when yeah. all the green grass is burnt up. Yeah. What is more, what is more plausible in this case? There, there are two types of burn. There's burning by fire, right? And burning by a type of dryness, a type of you know the sun yeah. beating down on things, lack of moisture, and lack of moisture, right. right? So in this buildup, because in every single case in observed systems, it's a buildup. You know how long that buildup is? That buildup is about twenty-three years. Okay. Right? Okay. So imagine humidity at ten percent for about a good fifteen years. You would have no <laughs> nothing would be alive hardly. I mean, it would be like a desert. Nothing. Uh oh, Mike from around the world just got cut off. Uh, maybe he's getting into some areas that the uh, that the NSA don't want him to go. We'll wait for him to call here. This happens to him uh, occasionally, but let's get let's let's try to see if we can get him back in the same path. He'll call here any second when he realizes they've cut him off. Uh, it's it's quite extraordinary what we're talking about tonight. We can't stop it. But we can prepare for it. We can't stop these things that are prophetically already told us that were going to happen. 
but we can pray over ourselves, our body, our family, and we can prepare for it. You know, because we're not appointed under wrath. And and even before the wrath of God's poured out, which will be gone if you're a believer. And some of you watch right now aren't believers. Maybe you've never had a relationship with Christ. Maybe you've never been born again. I want you to know there's great hope for you tonight. We'll wait for Mike to call back in. He may not even know he's cut off yet. Or they may have disconnected him for a few minutes. Um, you know, Mike is uh, works for the federal government. He'll tell you that. He has many times. And uh, he's allowed to... to be interviewed by us here on this show every week. And um, he can't say anything that is classified. Um, and he does his best to give us as much info as he can and help us uh, for us to then read between the lines. It's good that we have a Bible that helps us along. All right, we're still waiting on him, and he has not resurfaced. Uh, I'll try to call him, see if I can get... Okay, so Mike Around the World is still out there, and uh, I'm sure he'll call back here any moment and he can get back on a secured line. He may be moving it to a different secured line, or he may have been uh, told he's done for the night. Uh, that That's only happened one other time um, in 10 years, so I, I would say he'll be back. Um, yeah, they monitor. That, and so let's just say that. Let's just do a, a full disclosure here. They, the government, does monitor this Thursday night broadcast. They've already told us that. And they allow us to talk, and they watch to see how we respond. And with us today is Mike from around the world. Mike, you there? Pastor Paul, yes. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I have no uh, idea. Yeah, I figured was, you, uh, you kind of got disconnected there. I don't know. I mean, you're just was, talking about the sun and the, I don't think it's anything uh, uh, not classified. I mean, I don't think it's anything classified here, are we? Well, it's it's not a lie. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> you're preaching truth here. I think you're allowed that, aren't you? As long as it's not classified. <laughs> yeah, that that was uh, that was odd. Anyway, all right, anyway, all right, all right. We won't go too far if you don't want to here. If, if you if they don't want us to, but I say we do. Okay, all right. Because I'm, I'm game. Here's why. Here's why though. <laughs> okay. Because. The entire point is those conditions okay. are abrupt when they begin, right? So it's not like it's th- this this heat problem that we're having is is very obvious. I know they have their their explanations, but everybody how could a how could a how could a guy from the how could anybody know what these conditions would be so far in advance? How could that happen? I don't know. And uh, you know because these things have been observed, right? They're not telling everybody the true history about this planet. No, uh, they're not. They're not disclosing celestial issues and real threats that we have, and impending threats that are going to sting us bad. They're not talking about. Uh, they're not warning anybody about the pertinent things, right? They're still no. talking about these situations they can't control. In fact, a rule of thumb is if you can't control it. Don't talk about it. That's, that's, the, the, that's the rule of thumb. Yeah. And so, but they can't control a meteor storm. They cannot control a photonic exchange and material no. exchange no. with the sun. And this will be observed when the sky looks like it's on fire because it's gold and people don't see clouds and they start seeing sustained plasma conduits hit the ground. And when people go near it, uh, anybody who goes near those things are going to incinerate. That's almost like sustained lightning, but it will be plasma conduit. Do they, when they, the orbits, they just said ahead. there's okay. The, and I don't want to break your train of thought, but they just said that there's a a plasma. I don't know the exact words headed toward Mars right now. That came off the sun. It's going to hit Mars on uh, the 11th of December. And they said it was plasma. Now, plasma is a whole different thing than just CMEs. I mean, that's a that's a whole, it's like liquid, oh, I don't know. It's why when the lightning strikes, it, it just scatters because it's like it's right. a conduit, right? And it's a, it's a, it, it starts, lightning is, is a, is, is just sustained just for a moment. And of course, thunder is the sound of the lightning. 
okay. as the sound it makes as it breaks the sound barrier okay. and connects. But it is it is a representation of plasma, right? Okay. It is a it is the 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 uh, a form of matter. But when we have sustained plasma conduits, in fact, in the ruins on this earth, when you see a triangle uh, on the top and a triangle on the bottom, that's not a person. Those are sustained plasma conduits. They have been observed on this planet already, Pastor Paul. Wow. Uh, the, I believe that the, the longest one that I knew about was about two, three seconds, about three seconds. Wow. And so we know that, you know, as the atmosphere continues to charge, as the dryness comes, right, that electric potential in the atmosphere is static is going to be off the scales. It's going to be off the scales. Um, the governments of the world know this. They know this. The power companies know it. And they know what they're really preparing for, right? That's why they came out with the new transformer technology. That's why they came out with the new fuses. That's why they came out with the uh, new error check system, because they're checking static discharges of the atmosphere. That's why the cell phone towers have something that is not an antenna on it to actually utilize some of that power in the, in the um, uh, 5G transmission system, right? They're using atmospheric power. That's why people are going to see spheres put at the top of every single building. All this stuff is going to begin to happen because they're going to utilize it as best they can before it just, you know, they know what's about to happen. Mm. They already know what's about to happen. Mm.